Hello yoga community. Today's yin yoga class is a heart opening class. As we already know, before energy organizes itself within the human body, it manifests as chakras and meridians. Chakras are the energetic spinning wheels located in the upper body in the midline of your body. Every endocrine gland and organ are associated with each of the seven spinning wheels, chakras. The heart plays such an important role, a vital role in our existence. The heart chakra governs the lymphatic system, the circulatory system, the cardiovascular system and the respiratory system. It also governs the shoulders, arms, hands, lungs and of course the heart. Let's start by sitting on your mat in locust pose. So finding your place on the mat, you can sit in any position you like. You can sit in Vajrasana, but we're going to be sitting in locust pose. Also a little prop if you need to elevate your sit bones. Let's start by bringing your hands into a beautiful mudra to open up and invite more love into your heart. The heart mudra, we're going to place your index finger on the fleshy part of your palm and then your thumb, your middle finger and your ring finger connect and the little pinky finger is nice and relaxed. Placing the top of the hand on the tops of the knees, closing the eyes and closing your mouth. And we're going to use this time at the beginning of your class to return inside the inner body, to let go of the day, to let go of any expectations and keep bringing your awareness to your heart by breathing into your chest, filling your lungs, feel that expansion, exhale, slow release, feel your belly fall and expand. Just keep breathing here. Allow the time for the central nervous system to slow down. Slow, full, deep breaths. Feel your belly rise. Feel your belly fall. Softening through your shoulders. Relax through your hips. Take a moment to also feel the knees heavy and feel a relaxation of your toes. With your internal gaze between your brows, here there are no thoughts. Just feel the breath. Nice, slow flow breathing. And take a moment to bring your awareness to your heart. Can you feel more space in your heart center? More expansion? Even a sense of gratitude? Good. Feeling open and awake. We're going to keep the eyes closed. I'm going to bring the hands in front of the heart and we're just going to start by bowing the chin to the chest, head to the heart, honouring the heart. And if you have anything you would like to dedicate this heart opening class to, please do so. Rolling the shoulders back, lifting the head up nice and slowly, bringing the hands, palms back onto the knees. Open the eyes if you need to, it's up to you. We're going to move into our first posture today, which is a supported fish with my beautiful friend Julie. So this is where you really need to utilize your props. If you have blocks, you would place a block parallel with your bra strap and then another block at the base of the spine. I like to use props which allow you to really melt and release all muscle in the body. If you have a bolster or a pillow, you're going to place it in the base of your spine 
you know, extend your legs nice and long and we won't keep the legs in Bakasana, but if you choose to, that's okay. I want to focus more on the heart. So we're going to slowly come down one vertebra at a time. Let's stop there. If you feel you need to, you'll then place another little pillow to protect your cervical spine. And if you're more flexible, you're gonna come all the way down nice and slowly, one vertebra at a time. Relax the back of the head, the neck. And I would invite you to raise your hands a little bit more above your heart and keep them on the floor. That's one option too. If you're more open through your shoulders and more flexible. Otherwise, we're gonna bring the hands a little bit lower, just above the heart. Good. Closing the eyes and closing your mouth. And just allowing that nice gentle outer rotation of your legs, your femur bone, your calves, your feet. And always relaxing the toes. No tension in the feet. As you breathe, we're gonna breathe into the chest and create more expansion into the heart. As we breathe into the chest, you'll feel an organic softening through the shoulders. As you soften the back of the head and the neck, always keeping the internal gaze between your two brows. And we're keeping the breath flowing slow full deep breaths and as you allow the palms to be open the heart to be open the mind to be open just want you to stay inside your body here and witness any sensations any tingling maybe in the hands palms Feel the muscles melt away from the bone and allow the class to be an inner journey. The essence of yin is slow and it's about moving inward, stillness, breath. Use the breath. Use the breath to create more space in your heart more space for love, for joy, compassion, gratitude. So those are some of the emotions and qualities that you feel when your heart chakra is open. Abundance. What a beautiful way to live, to be abundant. So to live in that space and operate from the place of gratitude and abundance and love, non-judgment, that's going to open up a lot of opportunities, a lot of doors for you. Because when your heart chakra is blocked, it not only blocks new love into your life, but it also blocks opportunities for new jobs and for growth. And whatever the power of manifestation becomes stagnant when the heart is blocked. So it just doesn't affect love. So the whole point of the class is to unblock. Anahata is the word in Sanskrit for heart, which means unstuck. To unblock, to unstuck, to open your heart so you can invite more abundance into your reality. You have one more minute here to really enjoy and to melt into your beautiful supported fish posture. Just take a moment also to check that the back of the body feels heavy. We keep the top of the body soft and light through breath. Last 30 seconds. 
deepening the inhale, lengthening the exhale. And taking one more big inhale and a nice long, slow, long exhale. To come out of your supported fish pose, you need to be really gentle here. You're gonna push up onto your elbows and lead with your heart and be conscious of your head, your neck, very nice. We're gonna release into a position of caterpillar where we're gonna extend the legs and we're gonna reset the spine. So we're gonna lengthen up through the lower spine into the chest and a nice exhale forward fold. Now it doesn't have to be too deep and if you need to place something underneath your kneecaps to protect your hamstrings, please do so. This is the time where the body does a little bit of an integration and a bit of a reset before we move into the next posture. So in the reset postures, your eyes remain closed, your breathing stays calm and we continue witnesses, witnessing the sensations within your internal body. A few more breaths. And you'll slowly unravel out of your restorative caterpillar, one vertebra at a time, keeping your chin on your chest and you're gonna roll the shoulders back before you lift your chin. And if you can do this with your eyes closed and you know all the postures in yin, please keep the eyes closed and keep staying inside your body. The next posture is a variation of child's pose. So we're gonna open up the knees mat width apart and you're welcome to use your blocks. You place the blocks on the edge of your elbows if you're going to use your blocks. So we're going to extend out of the lower lumbar, come forward and by extending the hands. And we're gonna place the arms up on top of the bolster and you're gonna make whatever adjustment you need to. Try not to allow your head to rest on your bolster. We wanna bring the chin down to the chest so the third eye is close to the mat. Excellent, and the options here is to bend your elbows and bring your hands, palms in prayer over the top of the back of the head. Excellent. So whatever variation works for you, and once you do find your posture, yin yoga, we hold the posture for a minimum of four minutes. So we find stillness. And in the stillness, you start to feel a little bit of discomfort. This is normal. When you start to feel some discomfort, that's often a sign of stagnant energy within your body. That's when we need to breathe and navigate the breath into those areas of tension or resistance. The reason we hold the postures for up to four minutes is so that we can access that discomfort within the body. And that's really where the journey of yin yoga begins. So that discomfort over time begins to shift. So this is the whole goal, to move the discomfort out of the body by activating a deeper flow of chi via your meridians to whatever parts of the body, whatever parts of the body that we're working on. This specific class is for your heart. Now the heart meridian, if you're not too sure, it starts not actually at the heart, it starts at your armpit. It travels through the inside of your arm and all the way out through your baby finger. That is your heart meridian. So we will be feeling it in your upper body. A lot of upper body work in a heart opening chakra class. So just let your head relax completely. I invite you to feel the back of the neck heavy. You should feel it through your shoulders, through the inner arms. 
If you have tight hips, you might feel it through the hips. And of course, if you do have tight hips and we can't relax the sit bones in the directions of the heels, you would be placing a little pillow between your heels and your sit bones, allowing the hips to soften. Remembering that in yin, there's no activation of muscle. Then it becomes a yang yoga practice. Okay, so returning back into your internal body. Keep the breath flowing in and out through your nose. Feel anchored through your elbows. Your knees. The tops of your feet. Relaxing your ten toes. Feeling the gentle outer rotation of your heels and allowing the sit bones to melt, to melt in the direction of your heels. Soften your hips, relax your belly, let the belly feel heavy, let the chest open. The chin slightly tapped to the chest. The back of the neck, the cervical spine stays long. Third eye to the floor. Breathing comfortably. Your last 30 seconds. If you haven't already done so, let the head feel heavy so you can feel your forehead on the floor. Internal gaze between your brows for the last few breaths. Soften the shoulder blades. Slow breathing for three, two, one. So gently you'll move the hands, palms away from the back of the, yep, and reach forward and stretch forward gently. You're going to push up through your hands and nice and gently, one vertebra at a time here. And then we're going to bring the knees together and we're going to sit in Vajrasana and move into an Indian style child's pose. So inhale, lift like Julie does and a nice exhale, forward fold. My favorite restorative posture. Let the shoulders really melt here and the sit bones. And even though it's a restorative posture here and it's a resetting posture, it's a beautiful way to really feel that nice outer rotation of your arms and your legs and just feeling the heaviness of the back of the body and really feeling gravity, allowing gravity to create more space. Nice, slow, full, deep breaths here. Letting go of any thoughts. Just take two more breaths in this position and enjoy. And on your last exhale, you're going to slowly roll up the exact way that you came in. Nice. The next posture is called broken wing, but I call it opened wing. So please come down proning position, facing onto your mat. So there is a few different variations of this posture, but we're going to start by extending the arm. Let's, let's start by extending your left arm out and right arm, exactly like this. So Julie's facing me, but we're going to line up the wrist with the shoulders, both wrists like this. You can spread the fingers apart. 
Okay, we're going to push up. Yep, and we're going to push up all the way onto the left shoulder here for your open wing. So we can stay here and relax. So the key point here is that the shoulder stays on the mat, really important. And then we're going to get the right leg. This is optional up and over to the other side. So we create an, a bit of a twist here through your upper body for your heart. Okay. If you need to, we can place a little pillow underneath the foot, especially if it's just left hanging up here and you're using muscle. Allow it to soften and relax. So please use the props. If you're at home, they are available for you and it will be, allow for you to go deeper into your body. Okay, the other option is the more advanced students with good shoulders, we're gonna come into a bind with that right arm up and over. Yes. Okay, so we're gonna make sure that the eyes are closed and that the left side of the body feels grounded and supported and anchored, especially the top of the head, the temple. And we're gonna bring the awareness to the feet and we're softening the toes, no tension in the toes. So allow the heels to feel heavy, a softening of the calves. Feel that gentle, this time in a rotation of your left thigh and your knee. And as you breathe into the chest, it's a gentle outer rotation, good, of your shoulder. Eyes are closed. The back of the head is heavy. And we keep breathing, nice, calm, full, deep breath. So while you're in this position, I want you to really feel expansion in the heart within the inhale. And as you exhale, I want you to feel the body melt a little bit deeper into your mat. Scan the body and feel, is there any tension? And am I holding on? Is there a resistance somewhere? Allow the body to work with gravity and to work with breath. The breath, the healing part of every yoga practice. So bringing your awareness to the fingers, it's a softening of the fingers. Feel the wrists, the elbows, the shoulders. You'll definitely, most definitely be feeling it in your left shoulder. Breathe into that part of your body. Without a narrative, remember we're using the breath to connect the mind with the body. We're not stuck in the head. There's no stories there. Instead, we're present in breath. And then we keep breathing nice, Julie, into the heart. Slow exhale into the belly. Feel the belly heavy. Feel the hips heavy. So we still have one more minute here to really relax. How deep can you get? How comfortable can you feel? Last 30 seconds, breathe into my hand. So the last two breaths, really deep in the inhale. Length in the exhale.
and slowly you're going to move your right arm first come out of the bind bring the legs together come into proning position and bring the arms to the side and we'll face the right hand side of the body to reset the spine here when you are in the shavasana i invite you to breathe into the chest and feel your heart beat into the mat and every exhale i want you to feel the expansion of your belly across your mat so always stay connected to breath inhale belly rises Exhale, belly falls. And also take a moment to relax your brows. Soften the brows. Take two more full, deep, nourishing breaths here. And on your final exhale, we'll bring the chin forward and we're going to do the left hand. So we're going to bring the left wrist up in line with the shoulder, right arm stretch out, wrist in line with shoulder. Take a big inhale first, you're going to peel open through your left shoulder. So make sure you find the right position. You shouldn't be feeling any pain. If you're feeling pain, make the adjustment. You're also welcome to put a little pillow underneath the neck if there is a big gap there. And if you can't get your shoulder on the floor, always a little bit of a blanket perhaps. And then we're going to place your left leg up and over. Mm -hmm. One side's always going to be more open than the other. And we're going to allow Julie, the left hip to come down and forward. Yep, do we, you may need a prop or you might not need a prop. Yep, keep that, keep the bottom leg a little bit bent. Yeah, good. Really nice. And the left arm, if you'd like to come into a bind or not, that's up to you. So there's a few different variations. You do what feels good for you. The important part here is that you're activating a deeper flow of energy through your arm, your right arm and even your left arm. And that the heart space is nice and open. Every inhale, we are breathing into the upper lobes of the lungs, aren't we? And exhale, we're feeling the back of the body, the belly, the hips feel heavy. Anchored through the right side of your body and then making sure that all parts of the body are relaxed. Again, we're breathing into the upper lobes of the lungs and exhale. So breathing in and nice, slow exhale. Softening, good. So the right hip naturally goes down and forward and the shoulder goes down and back creating a bit of a nice twist feeling the right temple softened against your mat so there's a lot of focus on softening and relaxing the body but it's just as important to relax the face 
softening the brows, no tension in the brows, allowing the lids over your eyes to feel heavy and softening the jaw by releasing the tongue from the roof of the mouth. So you should really be breathing into your right shoulder right now. Relaxing the right toes, the right fingertips, the left fingertips nice and soft, the toes of the left foot relaxed. For your last minute, we're just cultivating a deeper flow of energy into the heart. Keep the internal gaze between your brows. Last 30 seconds, an invitation to melt a little bit more, to breathe deeper. For the last three, two, one, you're going to gently release your left arm, roll back into the front side of the body pruning position and coming back into Shavasana. This time you're going to face the left hand side of your room with the right cheekbone on the floor, giving your neck a nice neutral stretch both sides right and left. And then relaxing the shoulders down and away from your chin. No tension in the upper body. And just allowing the sit bones to melt. Feel the shoulders and the hips against the mat relaxed. And feel the heart beat into the mat with the inhale. On the exhale, continue feeling the belly expand. This way you know, you feel, you witness the breath flowing, moving through the upper body. Take two more breaths here. And on your last exhale, we're going to gently push up. We actually roll onto the side and bring your knees into the chest. A nice gentle way of coming out of Shavasana. Yeah, come into fetal position and then push up. And we're going to be moving into different variations of camel. So if you are an advanced practitioner, you can come up onto your knees, hip width apart or a little bit more if you have too much pressure on your lower lumbar. We're going to place the hands on the hips. We're going to, don't just collapse, you're going to take an inhale, lift your chest, and you're welcome to stay here, stay anchored through your knees and the tops of the feet. If you game, then you're welcome to go all the way down and grab onto your heels. Into Ustrasana. And that might be a lot for four minutes. So you're welcome to stay here with the shoulders relaxed. And the other option is, which is probably the more better one, especially if you're uh, quite new to yin yoga, is Setu Bandha. So it's a half bridge, you want to relax on the back. So there are options. And this one, you're going to keep your knees hip width apart and relax the 10 toes on the floor. We're going to lift the hips up. 
in three, two, one. And the option is to roll onto the shoulder blades and then we're gonna bring the hands, palms together. So we do wanna feel it in the arms, Setu Bandha for the heart meridian. And if you, the other option of course is your camel. So we're going to hold the posture for four minutes. So it's really important that in these postures, the foundation doesn't move. Pay attention to the toes, especially the big toes. The 10 toes stay anchored into the mat. The weight distribution is equal all over the feet. So I want you to feel all four corners of the feet grounded and relaxed. If you have any tension through your shoulders, please release the interlocked grip. The chin tucked to the chest and the back of the head feels nice and heavy. Shoulders heavy. And with the palms together, it's a gentle grip of the fingertips. Try not to pull too much. Just relax the grip. And you will feel that the hips start to come down a little bit over time, that's okay. So energetically, the knees are moving forward, the chest is elevating, and the back of the body, the head is down. So creating that nice bridge posture here. So we keep the breath flowing, nice, calm breaths. So the heart, the heart chakra is the gateway for the physical and the non-physical. So the bottom three chakras are really rooted into the 3D reality of being a, a human being. So a lot of people operating from the bottom three chakras. And then once you reach the heart, that doorway to consciousness, for me anyway, the goal is to operate from the heart up. So the heart and the throat and the pineal gland, pituitary gland, so we stay connected to source. So the idea is to really have all the chakras aligned within the internal body so we can activate all seven of them. But the heart really is that magical point where we can tap into the divine operating from that space of heart. That place is really where the frequency, the highest frequency available to humanity lives which is love. So I really love working on the heart and I always get so much out of teaching heart opening classes. So if you feel like the hips need to come down a little bit, that's okay because this is, cool. this is the master posture of the class and we only have a minute left to go. So just if you're feeling like this is too much, come down a little bit lower, release your hands, do what you need to do, but keep the heart elevated. And again, the focus is to breathe into the heart. So the highest frequency, love, which means love is here and the opposite of love is fear. Fear, fear, fear and grief really, the car, yeah, I would say it is the cardinal bondage of life when you operate from that frequency. But it never has to be that way. Last two breaths here, even bigger than you thought you could breathe. And slowly we release the interlocked grip, come down one vertebra at a time. So start from the cervical through the thoracic and then the cervical spine. 
and then we're going to release the arms and the legs and just stay in Shavasana position with long arms, long legs. Oh, and this feels nice and restorative after Setu Bandha and Ustrasana pose. Some quiet time here to cultivate all that movement and opening within your internal body. Just take two more full deep breaths. And we're gently going to come into a fetal position here. Flip over to whichever side you like and we do take two breaths here. Feel safe, feel held and supported. And when you're ready, in your own time, we'll push up and we'll come up into Anahata Melting Heart Pose. So in this posture, it's really important that you do keep your knees directly underneath your hips so it doesn't actually move into a child's pose. The modification I guess could be a child's pose if this is too much for you but I suggest that if you're feeling any discomfort you'll just place a little blanket underneath your kneecaps. No discomfort in your knees and if you need to place a bolster underneath your chest then that's another option too. So let's stand up on the knees Mm -hmm. and extend the hands forward. Yep. And then we're going to bring the head down below the heart. And keeping the hips directly left above your knees. Beautiful. So once you are in your position, if you feel that your feet are lifting up off the floor, then you would also place a prop over the top. So please use the props if you're not as flexible. We're both yogis here, so we practice a lot. We always use props whenever we can. But this posture here is really perfect for creating more of a deeper flow of energy into your heart. So if it's too easy, extend the arms a little bit more forward, but pay attention that the hips don't go beyond the width of your knees. Keep your joints aligned. And then instead of feeling like you're stretching your arms, I want you to go to where you can and then soften. The whole idea is to soften. Nice, calm breaths, always breathing calm. And it's a beautiful posture of surrender and honoring the heart and the mother and the earth. Head below the heart and the internal gaze between the brows. And the softening of the shoulders. You'll feel the muscles melt away and down. You'll feel your sit bones scoop up and the muscles melt over the bone. So melting heart, melting muscles, melting body. And breathing here, always into the heart. And then on the exhale, feeling the belly heavy.
So if you have any tension in your cervical spine, always keep the chin away from your chest so the back of the neck is nice and long. And then you're also welcome to put a little pillow underneath the third eye if the third eye does not connect with your mat. So this is just one of the ways that we, this is one of the ways that we can open up the heart chakra through doing a yoga practice. There are a lot of other ways, as simple as practicing non-judgment and not criticizing people. And smiling, smiling is a great way to, to warm your heart doing activities which bring joy, joy and appreciation into your life. And rituals, rituals of giving and receiving. There's so many ways to cultivate more love and gratitude into your heart. So melting heart is, is very well known in yin yoga the word melting heart says it all and i want you to really enjoy the last 30 seconds in this posture and really feel the heart expand against the mat and feel that nice gentle outer rotation of your legs and feel the palms open against the mat and to continue breathing into the heart Last two breaths. And slowly pushing up. Let's just come up nice and slowly and do a few rounds of cat cow here. So we continue keeping the knees directly underneath the hips and the wrists under the shoulders. We're going to take an inhale, lift the heart, lead with the chest slowly, one vertebra at a time, internal gaze up. And then the exhale, it's a nice slow tucking of the tailbone, one vertebra at a time, rounding of the spine, cat. So you can go at your own pace, a bit of movement and flexibility through your spine and Julie uses Ujjayi breathing throughout her yin yoga class that breath keeps you inside of the body and out of the head it keeps you connected and conscious and aware And we're going to meet in a tabletop position when we finish the cat cow. And we're going to move into rolling panda where we'll start in anahata position. And we're going to start by just coming down back into anahata. And there's a few different variations with this one. We're going to push up back into the hands and then we're going to inhale the right arm up. and exhale, bring it down. Good. So we're coming into a nice little bit of a twist here. So there are little variations that we can do. So let's start by making sure that the right shoulder is anchored into the mat. And if it's not, you'll roll up a little bit of blanket and make sure you have that support there. So the right palm faces up and you're welcome to extend your leg if you like your left leg it's up to you so there are variations and if you just want to stay in the in the beginning part of it that's just as good so wherever you're at i want you to just find your breath and hold your posture for a four minute hold So if you're feeling too much discomfort with the leg extended, please bring it back where it was. 
Stay on both knees and feel supported in the posture, really important that the foundation feels secure for you. Uh, the other option is the bind. Better for your heart meridian, but it is just an option. With every inhale, it's more of a gentle outer rotation of your left shoulder and the left hip stays down and forward. Breathing into your upper body, especially through the shoulder blades, the scapula, the shoulder girdle. Breathing into the inside of your arms, extending the arms, relaxing the wrists, relaxing the fingers, and relaxing all toes. As your left shoulder goes back, left shoulder allows to come forward and the belly and the chest always relaxed. When the heart chakra is blocked, you might find yourself operating from a place of fear and grief, we know this, but also anger and frustration and the ability to hold on to past hurts, not being able to let go, and again, criticism and judgment plays a vital role as well in an unblocked heart. But really important to learn how to forgive, not just others, but to forgive yourself. So a lot of the reflection is about external things, but it's about going inward and forgiving yourself and not criticizing yourself or judging yourself but rather loving and accepting and appreciating and being grateful for who you are. Last minute here, if you can, you'll sustain your stillness and you'll keep navigating your breath to wherever you're feeling it within your body. The stories in your mind, let them go. They're not real. What's real is being present in the moment. We're present in the moment with feeling and with breath, with stillness, with surrender with reconnection, 30 seconds. Last two breaths. And slowly, very slowly, if you're in a bind, release your bind. And bring the feet back together, two knees on the mat. And then we're going to inhale right arm up again, if you like. Uh -huh. And then exhale right arm down. Good. I want you to sit back here and just do a little bit of a stretch. So we're going to sit back. And we're just going to extend the right arm forward. And then we're going to cross it across the body. Keep your shoulders, try not to hunch. Let's keep the shoulders down and back. And we're going to create a nice stretch there. Make an active stretch with a straight spine. Use the resistance. So use that left palm to really create that nice stretch as you stretch your fingers to the left. For three, two, 
one release that right arm and just a little bit of a sh neck roll here whatever feels good clockwise and anti-clockwise Okay, the last part of your final posture, rolling panda with the left arm. So back onto the hands and knees. I like to start by inhaling your left arm up. Reach up, create a nice extension and exhale, thread it through like threading the needle. And any variation that you like here. And again, you're using the props where you need them. If you like, you can extend your right leg. This is completely optional. Okay. If you need any props, you've got to use them. Would you like a prop? Mm -hmm. So if you are using your prop, you must not have a gap. <laughs> There's definitely no gap between your left shoulder and your yoga mat. So once you've established you have a really good foundation, you close your eyes and close your mouth. And we return to the internal body, navigating the breath wherever you feel you need to. And just allowing the body to be still. And when you are still, start to feel everything slow down. Allow the body to feel heavy. Allow the body to feel supported by your mat. So letting go of any stories. Find your breath and be present in the moment. If you are in a bind, feel the right shoulder roll down and back away from the chest. And feel the left hip with gravity move down and forward. If you have extended your right leg, try not to use muscle, disengage muscle, a slight bend of the right knee. And you can feel the outer edge of the right foot or the right foot flat, the softening of all toes, the softening of the fingers. And as you extend your left arm, breathe into the inner arm. Feel that extension. Allow for a release. The color of the heart chakra is not red <laughs> like a rose. That is your mulandara, your root chakra color. The color for the heart is green, like green grass or an emerald green. Beautiful, bright green when it's opened and when it's activated. When it's not, it can be like a murky color green, like a brownish color green. But you can change that color through visualizing a beautiful, brilliant green in your heart space. So when you ever do a yoga nidra, a yoga nidra meditation, always visualize green in your heart. 
and start to feel the warmth in your heart. You have the last 30 seconds here, an invitation again to deepen breath, to melt the body, to stay present. Last two breaths. And slowly, gently, mindfully, releasing the bind, pushing up through your right palm, unthreading your arm, but first bringing your knees back on the floor. And we're gonna inhale the left arm up, Reach up, create a nice extension, and when you're ready, exhale down. And we're going to sit in Vajrasana and stretch the left arm with a nice straight spine. Inhale, left arm out. So keep the shoulder back in the socket. Use your right palm and extend the left arm over the body. Try not to do anything lopsided or hunching. Soften the shoulders. No tension in the shoulders, especially after all that work and use the resistance here to create a deeper stretch. And lengthen for three, two, one. Release your left arm. A couple of shoulder rolls here, forward and back, forward and back. Let's close the class with a final Shavasana. So props if you need it, under the cervical spine, under the back of the knees, up to you if you need it, and a blanket, a blanket to keep you nice and warm. It's winter here in Australia, so we are going to stay nice and warm. No point being in Shavasana if you're feeling cold, right? You want to be warm and cultivate all that nice warmth. In traditional Chinese medicine, the heart is associated with the element of fire. So we want to keep warm, don't we? It just makes sense. So the heart, you're going to bring your awareness to your heart in this final Shavasana. But first I want you to just relax your arms and your legs and just let that beautiful outer rotation take place. The surrendering, the letting go feeling supported by your mat. And then as you bring your awareness to your heart, you may want to put your left hand on your heart or both hands, up to you, or the right palm on your belly, whatever works for you. And I want you to use this time to Start to cultivate all the blessings that you have in your life. It's a good time to take stock, to take inventory of these blessings. And as you breathe, I want you to think about someone or something that brings you joy. Or maybe a scenario or an experience which you're so grateful for. And when you start to feel gratitude and love and appreciation for whatever's coming into your experience right now, start to feel your heart, start to feel the heat and the warmth that you generate when you operate from a place of love. So maybe think about your child, 
your mother, your lover, a place that you love to visit. For me, it's Bali. And then feel that heat, the warmth. That is the energy that you create, the fire, the warmth, the energy of your heart chakra being open. So please stay here as long as you like and continue cultivating all the beautiful blessings that you have received. Namaste.